You can see all that corn syrup keeps them really, really chewy and soft. Uh, I like them just like this. Hey, hey, it's Cooking with Luke. Today we're gonna to be making an old family recipe that we all know as killer brownies. Uh, they're not really like deadly, I, I guess. I'm sure you could put something deadly in them, but it's one of those like death by chocolate. Ooh, so chocolatey, that kind of thing. Let's get started with our dry ingredients. We start with one and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour, a quarter teaspoon of baking soda, an eighth of a teaspoon of baking powder, and an eighth of a teaspoon of salt. Then we can just lightly stir that up with a spatula that we can use later when we're putting the batter in the pan. Well, that's our dry ingredients. So now we're gonna head over to the stove and cook up some of our wet ingredients and make a little sauce. You'll see what I mean. Here we're gonna combine several ingredients and get them boiling on the stove to basically make a syrupy base for the brownies. So we start with one cup and two tablespoons of sugar. Then we add a quarter cup of light corn syrup. A quarter cup of water and nine tablespoons of butter. Cut into smaller pieces so they'll melt a little faster. A stick of butter is only eight tablespoons, so you need a, one more off of another stick of butter. Now we'll turn the heat up and bring it to a boil. It's getting close, just another minute or so until it's probably ready to start boiling. While you're doing that, you can also get 14 ounces of semi-sweet chocolate chips ready and get them in a bowl so that you can pour this syrup over the top of them uh, as soon as it gets to boiling. We'll show that here in a second. You can see it's boiling pretty good here, so I'm gonna turn the burner off and then all you have to do is just pour this over those chocolate chips. After a couple of minutes of that, you'll see that the chocolate's getting all nice and soft and melted from that hot syrup that we put on top. So you wanna whisk it until it's pretty smooth. You're gonna whisk it some more so you don't need to overwork it. Once it's pretty well done, then you can add in three eggs. It's best to do these one at a time. Now it's time for one tablespoon of vanilla extract, which is quite a bit actually. And then you can start mixing in those dry ingredients from earlier. So it's best to do a little bit and kind of get it started and then just slowly keep adding those in. Now that you've got your brownie batter basically done, it's time to add a couple of extra ingredients to make them truly killer. We're gonna be using dark chocolate chunks, and I put these in the freezer ahead of time so that they won't melt as much in the brownies, so you'll find those nice little chunks of chocolate in the brownies even after they bake. You can add nuts, you can add milk chocolate, you can pretty much add whatever you'd like at this point, maybe some white chocolate chips, whatever you like in your brownies. The recipe calls for milk chocolate, but we're gonna do dark chocolate today. Mm. 
The recipe calls for six ounces, but use as much as you'd like. I think that looks pretty good. Now you just want to fold those in so they don't get too melted because the batter's still kind of warm. Now we're going to add all of that to a 9 by 13 foil lined pan and I'm going to rub a little butter on the bottom of this to butter the foil before you add the brownie batter. Remember that butter wrapper from earlier? Well we're going to use it now to butter the bottom of this foil lined 9 by 13 pan. Now to put the brownie batter in the pan. Oh, this can be a little tricky. And then you just want to spread it out just a little bit to make sure it's even. And now into the oven at 325 for about 40 minutes. After 40 minutes, get them out, put some oven mitts on and put them on a rack to cool. Now you're supposed to let this cool for about six hours, but I prefer just to do overnight, it's easier. And then you just cut them up into smaller pieces. I'll show you how to do that tomorrow when we cut them up into smaller pieces. Here we are the next morning. We had lightly covered this with saran wrap overnight just to make it a little less dried out. Try to hold some of that moisture in. Looks pretty good, so now we need to cut the brownies. The easiest way to do that is to get a cutting board and flip it over and it should pop right out because there's foil there and then you need to peel the foil off. Look at that. Then you want to take something like a bread knife to start making your cuts I tend to start by cutting it in half. In this case, I'm going to save half of this to cut later. Uh, we're not going to eat all of this very quickly, so I only want to cut through a little bit because those edges will dry up. So now that I've cut off half of it, Then you can take the rest of it and you basically just cut them as big as you want them. So for what I'm going to need them for, I will be cutting them into smaller pieces so they're a little more bite size, a little more grab and go. There you go. And then what you can do is flip those over and they're more the traditional brownie look to them. But those are pretty good, real soft. Uh, you can see all that corn syrup keeps them really, really chewy and soft, but they get that nice little flaky crust on top and it's really, really good. They're really Nice, you can cook them a little longer if you want them a little cakier, but uh, I like them just like this with a real, real fudgy. So just make them however you want. You can probably start with this brownie batter as a base for almost any type of brownie recipe. Uh, makes them really, really good. And you can always adjust the amounts if you would like just a little bit less or a little bit more of any of the ingredients and you can kind of play with it. So just a real good from scratch basic recipe to start with. And there you go, killer brownies.
I haven't done any cooking videos before, but would you like to see more? Like, subscribe, all those usual things, and we will make sure that we make some more. Maybe we'll even make s'mores? No, I don't really have a good s'mores recipe. Is that... Can you make a... The recipe's like three things? I don't know. But I have a bunch of other recipes that I guess I could make. I don't know what you'd want to see. Leave a comment below and I can do lots more random stuff. That's kind of my thing. So check it out. Have a good one. Wash your hands. Stay safe. Bye, everybody. Then we'll take it out and put it in... <laughs> Wait. Now get your hot pads and put them on a rack to cool. That's not a rack, but you get the idea. And then you can start mixing in the flour mixture, the dry. Now that you've got your brownie, you can see the